I'm back with a review on what happened in Linux in the last week. We're first going to start out with some Linux lore, which has caused a little bit of drama. A Microsoft contributed change to the Linux 6.13 kernel aimed at improving performance broke some setups. The change ended up bypassing some of the proper authorization or flow from the Linux x86 maintainers, and now is causing a last minute patch before the release of the 6.13 kernel, which is slated for January 19, 2025. So what happened exactly? Well, the x86 disable executable memory ROX support, the whole module writable address nonsense made a giant mess of alternative C, not to mention it still contains bugs, notable some of the CFI variants crash and burn. Mike has been working on patches to clean it all up again, but given the current state of things, this stuff just isn't ready. Let's disable it for now and let's try again next cycle. So this Microsoft contributed change really led to failing hibernation on Intel laptops, at least some Intel laptops, which is a pretty big deal. Basically, the in the collaboration process when it comes to Linux, as the x86 maintainers weren't involved in the fullest, so there was a breakdown in, well, first, communication. Second, there was insufficient testing on the patch and proposal, and it was an incomplete fix, and that's due to the fact that there was insufficient testing. This all caused and led up to a breakage with the module writable address function, that was in alternative C, and it wouldn't be fixed by this next patch, leaving some systems crashing. As Peter says here, there's definitely a breakage with the module writable address nonsense in alternative C that will not be fixed by the patch. The very simplest thing is at this point is to remove select arch has executable memory ROX if x86-64, and let's try again next cycle. Boris asked I send a proper patch, so here it goes. Perhaps next time, let x86 merge x86 code. Some shade being thrown around, of course. Basically, highlighting the fact that the x86 code shouldn't be messed with people outside of x86. And it says, I just love how this went in without a single x86 maintainer acknowledgement. It broke a bunch of things, and then it is still there instead of getting reverted. Let's not do this again, please. Regards, Boris as they're highlighting the significant process gaps that need to be addressed in order to make sure we keep up with the kernel's stability and reliability for people. There's a lot of developer dissatisfaction with just how this patching went down. We'll see what happens with the next kernel and how this gets addressed, but the problematic feature, the XMEM rocks, will be disabled before that 6.13 stable release, which should ensure that people don't encounter the crash issue with CFI or control flow integrity and hopefully the Intel laptops don't see any problems. This could have been a bigger incident where it caused disruption to the development cycle and release of the 6.13 kernel, but we're moving on from that as we let that develop. Well, we just got done talking about Microsoft engineers, but now let's talk about Alibaba engineers. As they've noticed significant flaws in the AMD GPU Linux kernel driver for resource management, things like double buffer freeze, unbalanced IRQ, reference counts, and other integration fails, leave some of these Alibaba engineers trying to clean up and fix AMD GPU bugs. Let's read about it a little bit. Recently, we were testing suspend resume functionality with AMD GPUs. We have encountered several resource tracking related bugs, such as double buffer free use after free and unbalanced IRQ reference count. We have tried to solve these issues case by case, but found that may not be the right way, especially about the unbalanced IRQ reference count. There will be new issues appear once we fixed the current known issues. After analyzing related source code, we found that there may be some fundamental implementation flaws behind the resource tracking issues. The AMD GPU driver is massively used, and when these engineers started tearing down the code, they found fundamental flaws in the flow or state machines, which as you can take a guess, can cause a lot of issues since it's used globally for AMD GPUs. The idea here is to really help improve the suspend resume stability, which is a common pain point for Linux users. And they believe they've found some of the reasons why this is the case. They make suggestions on how to improve the flow or state machines as described below, trying to simplify things and correct things, which is kind of funny because this just seems to be an unexpected contributor as Alibaba is known for their massive e-commerce and cloud computing. It's funny to see some of the resources helping open source projects, specifically on the AMD D GPU driver, but clearly they have a invested interest in trying to fix these things, but I would assume it's for Alibaba's cloud data servers. Assuming they're using AMD, this is a chance for Alibaba to try to strengthen its position in the cloud service ecosystem, but it's kind of funny to see that this has gone unchecked for quite a while. Hopefully we see continued and great development from these engineers. I'm looking forward to seeing how they clean things up. 
make sure to smash that like button. Also think about subscribing below as YouTube is finicky and you wouldn't want to miss some more Linux and programming videos. Here's something new and cool, support for color management protocol specifically on the Hyperlin Wayland compositor. It now supports advanced color management protocols, including HDR, making it the second compositor after KDE to enable HDR support for Linux. This is a huge breakthrough. Of course, enabling HDR will help enable the more vivid colors for your monitors and enhance gaming video experiences if you have that HDR support on your monitor. While it's still in the experimental phase, we're getting a foundation for that HDR adoption in Linux, which is exciting. So what does this pull request do? called Support Color Management Protocols. It adds support for Color Management Protocols XX, Color Management V4, and Frog Color Management V1, which will store and pass color management properties. The actual CM should be implemented by someone else with the means to verify that it works as expected. Passing HDR metadata without processing should be enough for full screen gaming. As 3000 lines of code got added, it's really exciting to see some of this development. And a lot of engagement has happened. As you can see, a lot of support for this particular pull request. As we can see in the code, we see two new protocols, as mentioned, and a lot of code written out in order to support those protocols. All exciting to see. So you Hyperland users get excited to test this out in the future. Or if you want to test it right now, you can go, well, build from source, which might not be the easiest thing, but it is a work in progress and is a very exciting thing to be coming in the future. Finally, let's talk about a cool and exciting proposal at least I'm very excited about this one as I use AMD X8664 architecture on all my Fedora desktop computer. A lot of talk has taken place in this sphere before. What is called the dynamic CPU optimized binaries. Other Linux systems have done this already, but Fedora is actually announcing their own proposal for an exciting new feature, which is optimized binaries for this architecture, which will overall improve performance and energy efficiency for users of modern hardware. So the summary here is individual packages can provide already optimized libraries via the glibc hardware caps mechanism. This approach will be extended to executables. The package provides an optimized variant of the binary in a different directory, a simple link to the small program which replaces the binary in user bin. At runtime, this program will find the most appropriate variant and execute it. Which packages provide the optimized code and at which level will be made by the individual package maintainers based on benchmark results? A few programs packages will be updated by the change owners to show how the mechanism works. So I'm going to break down this detailed description real quick. Basically, Fedora binaries are built to support all x86-64 CPUs. For newer CPUs and advanced instruction sets, optimized binaries can be found and provide performance boost for certain workloads. Then they have a dynamic selection helper program that replaces the standard binary via a system link at runtime and checks the CPU's compatibilities and selects the most optimized binary variant. And if necessary, just goes to the baseline if there is no optimized variant. Individual packages can choose to opt in if they want. That way they don't have to recompile the code. The overall benefits to this is modern CPUs experience faster and more energy efficient software. While older systems remain fully compatible, package maintainers are providing, hopefully we're gonna see benchmarks soon so you can tell if it's worthwhile or not. Overall, quite a big deal and definitely a benefit to Fedora. This right now is a proposed change to Fedora Linux, so this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be added to Fedora Linux, but it is an exciting development that needs to be reviewed and is gonna go through the changes process as it's been officially announced to the public and needs to be improved by the FESC or the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee. We'll keep following this one as it is exciting development. And this is Fedora's way of competing against other distributions that already kind of do this work that choose optimizations based on the hardware caps, aka hardware capabilities, and then select optimized libraries. Arch Linux has the capability, Clear Linux, as well as Catchy OS are all other distributions that focus around these types of optimized binaries. Either way, exciting to see this type of development. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. And finally, let's talk about this week in Plasma of the final Plasma 6.3 features that have been added. Notable new features include when notifications arrive while do not disturb mode is engaged, exciting. Exiting that mode now shows a single notification informing you what you have missed. Also on the desktop context menu for symbolic links, now includes a show target menu item, just like the one in Dolphin. We can see a preview here, right click on an object, it says show target, so where it came from. Also the system monitor app and widgets are now capable of collecting GPU statistics on free PSD. Notable UI improvements include reduced clutter on edit mode toolbar, making the contents more focused and relevant. Also external web links on Kirigami based 
applications such as Discover are now shown in the typical arrow pointing out of the square icon to make it more clear, which just refers to these icons right here, quality of life improvement to make sure things are cohesive, a new modernized UI style of standalone printer related applications that are not yet integrated directly into the system settings page, but worth a look here as it shows off the new design. All button closes on KD are now consistent. They've standardized the typical black X that we've all been using for a while now, but we should see a more cohesive experience with this latest update. There also have been notable bug fixes, including no longer crashing when you switch desktop from folder containment to desktop containment and back. There's also a bug that was fixed for full screen windows being screencasted to freeze under certain circumstances, made laptops more robust against waking up while the lid is closed. Tool tips for favored apps and kicker once again appear ex as expected. Typing text in a K runner that matches history item, but with a different capitalization no longer causes the grayed out auto completion. Text to desync. Plasma no longer unnecessarily shows you an OSD indication that the default audio device when you return from a different TTY and other visual bugs have been fixed. Notable performance and technical reduced the system monitors app background CPU usage down to one to 3% after some clever restructuring, removed a bunch of unnecessary old sanity checks on login, improved performance on certain GPUs while night light is active, and it's now possible to pre-authorize apps for remote desktop access. If you wanna help, you can contribute by either donating or becoming an active community member. A reminder that you don't need to be a programmer in order to support the project. Here are a few things that you can do, include designing and maintaining websites, translating user interfaces, promoting KDE, all exciting as I love to use KDE Plasma on my Arch Linux setup. It's a wonderful desktop experience. Speaking about changes to desktops, 2025, the latest release of the Cosmic Alpha 5 is officially released for the new year as System76 kicks off 2025 with a new Cosmic Alpha experience. This is quite exciting. I go in depth with some of the changes as well as some bugs and fixes that I'm wanting to see. I'm not going to go too far into it with this, but know that new things like the Cosmic Media Player are being roughed in and quite a few bugs and fixes have been implemented as well. You'll want to check that out. I do have a video for Alpha 5 released just a couple days ago, so it's fresh. Make sure to check that one out if you need something to watch right after this. What do you think about this week in Linux? And if you made it this far, make sure to smash that like button to get this out to more people. You're a true supporter, so don't forget to subscribe below for more videos like this. You wouldn't want to miss some. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple-to-read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.